Well, hello, folks. I got a good one for you today. Today, we're going to talk about, again, Pulse Chain. When's Pulse Chain? Two months! <laughs> no, no, seriously. All right. We're going to talk about this a little bit seriously for a moment. Um, yeah, no. When's Pulse Chain? Richard Hart recently, last week, was discussing the fact that, you know, things that you think would go easily don't things that you think would be hard are easy software is hard but in that what has hung up really really badly what's been dragging this back has been the sacrifice tools simply enough hey you put in this much uh, hex on this day that's great you think it should be easy to see what it was worth at the time it was put in those kind of files weren't kept too well <laughs> so it's been a lot of recreation of work to get that actually done so, yeah, he says, after that is done, it should be two weeks. Well, two weeks, okay, all right. Richard Hart says, two weeks, all right. I mean, I don't want to harp on the man too much, but... Uh... So, yeah, I don't want to harp on the man too much, but to put it simply enough, this was the high-tech, high-end computer device I made my sacrifice for Pulse on. Then, after I made that sacrifice, I had to proceed to call all of my friends and tell them how happy I was I sacrificed for Pulse. I should do the same. My friends then proceeded to show up with their brand new camera and get a picture of me window shop for my very first crypto car I was going to buy with my uh, profits. And well, producers, uh, guys, do we have a do we have a photo of me actually uh, actually there window shopping? Oh, yes, there I am. So young and eager for my for my car I'm going to buy with my crypto earnings way back in the day. Ha. No, all right. Seriously, Let's uh, take a little easy on the man, on Richard Hart. Uh, software is not easy. He's got a brilliant team. However, I will say, at this point, through my journey through the interwebs, I did happen to finally start stumbling on where the devs hang out, so-called the water cooler online, which they can stand around and harp the gossip and talk about their work problems. Now that I've found these chats, I can actually see what's going on. And I talk a lot about being a college dropout. I am not a financial advisor. Uh, here, I'm going to discuss something very plainly. Um, yeah, I crunch numbers like nobody's business. I am a savant with mathematics. I was in college for accounting with a 4.0 GPA. I was learning about fiduciary responsibility. And my funding from for school ran short because I am poor, so I had no way to pay for it. I dropped out. I've done a lot of construction because it's easy to find work for and surprisingly it's hard to find people who can just read a tape measure, let alone do Pythagorean theorem in their head. So I'm not a financial advisor. I have no fiduciary responsibility. I am only here to say, hey, this is what I found. This is what I'm planning to do. And I might think it's a pretty bright idea because I might be able to do math like Michael Burr is. Mm, Michael Burr. So, yeah, if you don't know that name and you don't know what the 2008 housing crisis was, you need to learn more about the traditional markets. And I may even do videos on that if I get comments, but I don't think anyone's too interested. They just want the crypto. They know that's where it's not rigged. So, yeah, I might know a thing or two. And then with my age, you wouldn't believe it, but in the 90s, I was coding Borland C++ and working on network infrastructure, configuring TCP IP and learning Cisco certification uh, standards. So I know how to crimp a network cable. I know how to build a computer. I know how to program a network. Blockchain, I was too busy in construction. I kind of thought it was a scam, but now I'm getting into it. And now I'm playing catch up since November. So no, I didn't know the difference between, November, between Bitcoin and Ethereum. I just knew they were encryption protocols. Now I understand so much more and I'm starting to learn programming code again to catch up. So yeah, this has been very exciting for me and that's where I come from with this information. I'm not going to say that, 
repeatedly or anything. I don't like to stroke my own ego. There's a reason I believe what I believe. And if you're here watching, you might believe it too. And a reason I can joke about waiting forever and going, yeah, you know, let's not harp on it, Richard Hart. Software development is damn hard. And really, I don't care if the cell phones are a little chip in my palm by the time Pulse Chain launches, as long as it works. And they're putting a lot of hard work into it. Testnet works flawlessly. There are no mistakes. There are no errors. There's so many audits. So now knowing that it is actually really possible Pulse Chain could be here May 1st. I know software development usually isn't that easy. So two weeks speaks too much. But I am going to say May 15th works really well for my schedule. Anytime in May, I'm very confident it's going to launch. And with that, I'm not worried because I have a plan. Do you have a plan? Did you go on testnet yet? Did you play with this? You know, all you have to do is type in pulsechain.com and ta-da, it will come up and tell you that the Pulse testnet is live. Why do you care? Because you need a plan. Because if you check this website every day, what do you think that'll say, highlighted in blue, when mainnet is live? I think it might say Pulse mainnet is live. It could be a good indicator. It might give you the new settings you need. be a good place to check. Oh, and then links, what you're going to need to do. So right off the bat, you might need to grab a little Pulse from the faucet so you can bank. That's pretty easy. Just click on faucet. Oh, look, it wants to connect your wallet. We'll hit next. We'll sign agreement to that. You can have my firstborn child, Richard. I'm not even going to check this contract. I believe in you. That was stupid. Always do everything you can to verify you are. Boom. Switch network. Boom. That you are signing a contract that you are secure with. I use dummy wallets with anything that I'm not going to, that I'm new with, that I'm not sure of. What's a dummy wallet? It's a brand new wallet with no assets in it. Make a brand new empty wallet. That's a dummy wallet. Put only the assets you're planning to move into that wallet and then move them from that wallet. That's it. You insulate all your actual assets or somewhere safe and the dummy wallet just moves your assets for you. It connects to these websites in case you sign a bad contract. All right, we'll prove and we'll switch the network. So first thing you wanna do, probably request some pulse. And boom, just that easy. That gets me a little more test pulse in my MetaMask. Should refresh and there should be one more, 10 more, 10 more. That's what we're getting. Perfect. 10 pulse. That's enough to go start banking with. Excellent. You have used the faucet. Do you have a plan? Do you know what you're going to do next? Well, perhaps now that you have some test pulse to work with, you may even want to go to the bridge. So the bridge, connect your wallet. What's the deal with the bridge? Oh, if you're connecting from your phone, it'll most likely be wallet connect. If you are connecting from your computer, MetaMask. I know you're using MetaMask on both. But it doesn't recognize it on cell phones the same. So wallet connect. But anyways, in this case, we're on a desktop, so we use MetaMask. Dun, 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 dun. Next, it is now connected. So now we can see we have directions from Pulse Chain Testnet to Rinkbeat Testnet. Rinkbeat being Ethereum. So we don't want to go to Pulse to Ethereum right away. We're trying to get in day one. How do we switch? We switch networks there done. Now we're going from Ethereum, the Polygon, to Pulse Chain, the Heartbeat. All right, great, perfect direction. What are we going to change? Hex? Oh, we can change Hex for Hex. That is wicked. And then we hit the send button. Of course, we have to actually put some numbers there. I believe I do have some Hex, so I'm just going to type a one. And oh, look, that's what it transfers to. Hit next. Oh, not enough for balance. It doesn't seem like my. Oh, that's because that's the dummy wallet. That does not have my. Ah, oh, that's cute. Anyways, in principle, you just hit send. And if I actually planned out my show, it might look better. Uh, if you go ahead and hit send, that's it. You're done. You've used the bridge. You have now gotten assets into the Pulse Chain network. Well, that's great. What's next on your plan? Ah, uh, we know what you want. You want the trading. All right, you've got a plan, you're in, you're going to the trading. We can go to the info and we see Pulse X, how busy it is. If there's a lot going on, we can see the Pulse X price up here. That's nice. 
can see some of the top tokens, but what we really want is uh, tokens. Just click on, look at that. We got a nice little ticker bar across the top showing us the best, like the Dow Jones points, all that and that. Cool, that's what you really want to see. And we still have our token lists that will fill out here. So you'll be able to monitor everything and decide by ratios, because these won't be prices. All these will be ratios in pulse before the fiat comes in. So you won't know what the price of everything is. That's why it's dangerous. That's why you can get wrecked. That's why don't trade. If you missed out on pulse and you want to grab some pulse and you have some asset and, okay, you want to get in just for getting it, the ratios may go to whack, but just do your one trade and stop. You won't know if you really got a good deal or a bad deal, but you got in on pulse early. Probably a good deal to buy a little bit. And in that, when I say that, I'm like, hmm, if I can harbor up about $100 myself, just $100, get in day one on some pulse i don't care how crappy the ratios are i probably have enough pulse to bank with for my entire life on this network i got in on a lot of other sacrifices this network is very important to me and the native token will probably do very 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 well i've done various math and models on prices how well i think this is going to do i have a lot invested in this i'm basically all in on richard hart and then i got a little extra cash so i diversified some and so I'm a chart maximalist. I do believe in some other crypto projects. But and you can't say this enough. In the traditional markets, you buy a share of, say, Apple stock or AT&T or whatever. And uh, you buy that. It, it's a Ponzi scheme. It does require the next investor to come in and buy more to put the price up. And you say, valuations, the company can buy its shares. The companies do do buybacks once in a while, and then they hold on to those shares and they wait till the price goes up because more investors have come in, and then they sell, taking all those investors' money, leaving them at a loss. And the company puts all those shares back on the market and rakes in the cash. That's disgusting. Buyback, if they bought it back, like originally when you invest in a company in those markets, like, hey, I'm Apple, I don't have money, but I have something I want to build. You want to invest, give me some money, I'll build it, I don't have to pay you. Great. Do I pay dividends? No, you're not really getting paid. But you have a receipt, just a little receipt that says you contributed to my company. Wasn't well, that nice? I have this little receipt. What does it do? Nothing. Occasionally it gets buybacks. The price will go up. Other people buy it. The price goes up. Great. So people want to own it. It itself has no utility. It doesn't do anything. And you need the next buyer to make the price go up. And the market manipulation, which is supposed to be illegal, FCC, coma, wake up, guys. So, anyway. Yeah, this is the situation where uh, the markets are, are cracked. And heck, it's, it's a pump and dump scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme in the real markets. And then Richard Hart has come along and made this mechanic called buy and burn. Seems gimmicky. But the company that produces revenue has a valuation, an actual revenue income, verifiable. It's going to happen. It's going to use that revenue to do buybacks like companies do occasionally. Except it's going to throw its shares in a dumpster like the other companies should, which puts the money back into the original investor's hands. It takes those receipts back out of the system. Thank you. You've been paid back for your investment because you chose to get out now. This actually links valuation of a company's performance to, let's call it its token price. We don't want to wake the FCC up now. Let's call it a stock price. So, yeah. The buy and burn is guaranteed dumping revenue into the system for life. And then everything paired with it is going to see some of that asset appreciation from that value being dumped in, which means pulse and hex. And hex on that network will be paired with hex on the Ethereum network. So it'll see some of that value transposition because Hart's Law sounds a little hokey. I have to do some research. No offense, Mr. Hart. I'm just pretty sure someone else has described the same concept before you, a different name. Um, However, hey, I can't think of it, so you might as well get the patent on it. Richard Hart, Hart's Law. It is true. Assets do transfer value like that. Like It's not just some out there theory. Like Metcalf's Law is not some out there theory. It was proven true, which is so weird. Like the Fibonacci sequence, like something that should be unpredictable is actually predictable. Funny when you find those. So, yeah, Hart's Law, very true. Very true. Metcalf's Law, true. The growth of this technology, when it's done well, potentials are 
amazing. The numbers just rack up and rack up in ways I can't properly describe in words. I can do the math, but then you don't understand the math. You don't know what you're looking at. So I got to figure out a better way to describe this other than you're not going to be poor anymore. Price is going to go up. Price is going to go up. Like, let's have a little peek. X has been fighting a little strange fight today. I know the rest of the chart looks scary, but when we actually zoom in into what's going on, we see Hex has found what looks like a bottom and has been putting up a fight. It's breaking lines of resistance. We're getting excited Wait for Pulse Chain to come. And again, when's Pulse Chain? I'm thinking it's May 15th works well for my schedule. And uh, yeah, those sacrifice rituals were true, according to Richard Hart, two weeks. So yeah, it's coming, folks. It's coming. And uh, thank you for Tune in to my channel for caring what I have to say about things. Thanks for being here. I have a chat for a crypto game theory, which is Top Guns Game Theory. You can find it on Telegram. And uh, I have a Twitter account. That's right, Top Gun X80 at Twitter. So you can find me in those places. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing more from my audience. I can't believe I have over a thousand subscribers. Oh, they love me. They really, really love me. Ah. So thank you guys. I do, I do really appreciate it, which is why I've decided to show my face and do even more content. You guys apparently like it. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, yeah, don't like and describe. I don't need that stuff. But do comment, comment, and let me know what you thought. Any improvements? Anything you want to hear about? Because I can do more than just pulse X. Just when I do, I don't even get any clicks or any views. You guys don't seem to care. So, here's the Paul's X stuff. Hit me a comment if you want to see something different. Have a great day, folks, and a happy holiday weekend.